Hey, what's going on, people of YouTube? This is Creating Your Own Economy in 2013. Did this video a few years ago. I am going to enhance it and talk about some things that I've been thinking about for the last few weeks, and hopefully you will derive some benefit. And as always, subscribe, like, comment, and share. Yeah, that's four things. I'm working your ass. Let's jump into it. Now, this will not really be about resale or picking or storage auctions because for the last four years, I've made my income from the new economy, which is a knowledge-based economy. I sell informational products. That's what I do. And going forth with this new webinar that's coming up, links below, creating your new economy. I won't get into the details because there's a whole separate video for that. But if you want to check it out, and I think you should, hit the link below. What's going on, and I've talked about it for the last few years, you know, the new economy, the disruptive economy, and it is a mixed bag. There are some people who are going to become so financially set from these things, it's going to be ridiculous, but a larger portion is going to be pretty much nose pressed against the glass from the outside looking in, pissed off, because understand you can't do the things that you did a few years ago that's going to make it in the new economy. It's just not going to work because it's, it's almost like everybody has information to everything. Yet, there's only a few people who are really taking advantage of the information because in the Hustle Mindset Project, you know, I did this thing about Airbnb and I'll talk to people and a lot of people still doesn't even know this site exists. Go check it out. You may be blown away. That's part of the disruptive economy. There's so many things that are coming. But to really get down to it, you need to create your own economy. And this is why. There is no such thing as stability in a job or a government agency. There isn't. Now, I know some of you are like, hey, my uncle retired from the post office for 25 years. The post office is under financial assault. Uh, they're talking about closing down branches. So I don't know about that. I wouldn't hang my hat on that. But essentially, this is the only way that you're going to be safe. Educate yourself. And when I say educate, I'm not talking about get a college degree. I'm talking about if you want to get a degree, get one as cheap as possible. But continue to educate yourself about your world, what's going on around in your world, locally, nationally, and internationally. Because we no longer live in a static economy where just what happens in your neck of the wood impacts you. If something really bad happens financially in France, that could impact your investments. It's that deep. So to really be safe, you have to embark on the path of lifelong learning. Because, give an example, for all you techie people, <clears throat> I mean, really, computers do not break down like they used to. And they were more expensive. And that's another part of the new economy. You're going to get the best of the best. And it's going to be cheaper. And it's going to be more reliable. And it's going to be better quality because of technology and new manufacturing processes. Like think of your car. Cars do not break down like they used to. The average car is easily getting 200, 300, 400,000 miles. You know, if someone keeps it that long because they're that well made. And that's across the board from Kia on up to BMW. That's what's happening. So with this new economy, people are going to have more options. But the big problem is the higher paying jobs are going to be rare because of technology and displacement. They're going to be rare. So if you are smarter than the average squirrel, you're going to create your own income streams because you have to. And I know we had this conversation before. Glendon, I don't want to be an entrepreneur. If you are that person that just wants to go work your 9 to 5, then go kick back and knock back some 40s or smoke your blunts or do whatever you do on the weekend, do not be upset or pissed off 10 years from now when that job that you had is gone and you've made no preparations for the future. Don't be pissed at anyone but yourself because I'm telling you today, easy jobs, Labor-based jobs will be plentiful, but they will not pay much. 
They'll be everywhere. There'll be plenty of labor-based jobs in the service sector for seven to eight bucks an hour to maybe 15. There'll be tons of those type of jobs. But is that what you want for yourself when you have a choice? So listen up. Number one, educate yourself. And two, let's get away from this passion thing. Because, you, you know, I call it the passion syndrome. It's like I must follow my passion. The truth of the matter is many people do not have inherent passions to begin with. They have things they like. They have things that they want to do. Follow your determination. Find something, even if it pisses you off, that holds your interest long enough for you to be engaged to become good at it or to keep pushing. Storage auctions were phenomenally hard, but the wow factor, I'll say it, I'll steal that from Daryl Sheets, was so strong that it kept us going through all the rigmarole. And really, the wow factor of storage auctions was that you could buy some for 10 bucks and flip it for 100, 200, and 300 frequently. That was really the wow factor because you had repeated high margins. But going forward, you cannot, you cannot just rely on one source of income. You cannot do it anymore. It's just too many things to happen. I have four sources of income and going up to five. Well, actually, there's some things going on, so I really need to look at that. But pretty much there's probably six. Are all of them high paying? Of course not, because some of them just started. But I am following my own advice. I am prepping for the future because that product or that thing that I have that only makes 50 bucks a month right now, three years from now, it could be making 20 but if I don't get started, and that's another thing, find something, get started, and stick with it. One of the things I've seen, and I've been here on YouTube long enough, and I know people are like, oh God, you know you're talking about you've been on YouTube for a long time. A lot of folks can't make YouTube for a year. So four years, there's something to it. But I see people who go from one thing to another, and one thing to another, and it's just like a, a dog chasing his tail. And you're not building experience. You're not building anything. You're just kind of jumping from one thing to one thing. But understand, you're going to have to make a grown person decision. I know having your options all open and doing what you want is very enticing. It's really seductive. And yeah, that's wonderful and that's great. But it can leave you broke. Pick something. Stick with it for a year. Even if it doesn't work out, you will have an experience level that you can take to the next thing. I'm going to just be honest with you. At times, you will fail. And you will fail miserably. Miserably. It will be humiliating. It will be ugly. And you will not want to think about it. And it's the best thing that ever can happen to you. Yes, because when you fail that bad... You find out a lot about yourself, and if you are mentally strong, you will improve. You will become better. If you don't fail, or you've never failed, or as I saw in the comment, I've never lost money in the resale business, I think you haven't pushed hard enough, because I don't know of anybody who's been really successful in any business ever that's not lost money. I don't know of anyone. If you can prove to me that you know someone, I would love to see that because I have lost a ton of money on some badass business decisions and it was a benefit at the end of the day because I learned something. And that's the thing with the new economy, the disruptive economy, creating your own company, is learning something. You can't get something until you become something. And that's the whole deal. A lot of people want to get, but they have nothing to give. They have nothing to give. It's just like, you know, romantic relationships. People are like, I want this, I want this. And the thing is, they don't have really that to give, and that's why they don't have it. Water seeks its own level. If you have it to give, it will come to you. If you have nothing but an empty tank and a pipe full of dreams, it could be lonely at night, for real. And your bank account could be lonely too. But the whole deal is, if you want to create your economy, you need to, number one, decide to create your own economy it's a decision and we live in a world where people I think sell themselves really short frequently because 
building your own economy, usually in the beginning, is going to be rough. You will not get immediate gratification. There will be a lot of hard work. There will be people looking at you kind of crazy because as Americans, we are in love with rapid results. That is one of the reasons that so many infomercials work because, hey, you don't have to work out for six months. You can work out for six days and get these wonderful results and people buy it hook, line, and sinker. If you reprogram yourself, and there will have to be some reprogramming that, hey, if I make two to six or seven or maybe 10% improvement every month over the course of a year, that's a lot of improvement. But we are predicated and preached and seduced that, oh, you're going to make 50% improvement in two weeks or 100% improvement in a month. And really, I've looked at the infomercial thing because at one point I was going to do one, and I just realized is similar products over a similar life cycle and the certain and the categories never ever change you know weight loss cooking fitness it's the same product cycle over and over again and then i go to the gym and i see people who just consistently have been working out for years who have that look and it's like pretty simple if you want to look like you've been working out for years <laughs> work out for years and, you know, when I, I was like, even in my own world, I was just like, ah, that's what I need to do. Because my new workout program, I've gone exactly back to basics, stuff that I used to do two decades ago. And it's being very effective because hard work and strategy cannot be replaced. Just can't. It just cannot in certain things. Certain things you can use technology, certain things you can use automation. But... Overall, it's just generally not going to replace such as experience, and you're only going to get experience by doing something and learning something. So, number one, make the decision that, hey, I'm going to create my own economy. Number two, what are you going to do? And this is another problem with people. Forget cookie-cutter solutions. I see people preach, don't reinvent the wheel. Don't. Well, if you reinvent the wheel or create something new product, you could become a billionaire. There's a lot of good reasons to in reinvent the wheel or to come up with a new wheel or to come up with something that replaces the wheel. Get away from, I'm just going, you know, if you're going to improve something, you're going to have, to, well, let me step back. You can improve something marginally and become very wealthy in the new economy. Because putting a different spin on a product that's already out there is a great path to making money. Another path to making money is actually creating something. Apple didn't really create the MP3 player, but they made it a thousand times better than what was out there. And they created an industry by being a serious disruptor and innovator. Prince made so much money when he did the download of his album once he was emancipated from his contracts, it was crazy. And he was selling stuff for 99 cents. That's the power of being a creator, a disruptor, in creating your own economy. Because another thing here, we have tools that can make you a lot of money right now that didn't exist a few months ago. When I say a few months, the last 18 months. <clears throat> they didn't exist. And what's going on, and this, this is where I'm saying stay abreast of what goes on in your world. Stay abreast of what goes on internationally and nationally. Because when something new drops and it has the potential to be really good, you want to jump on it right then and there. Because there's a few things that just came out and I, I jumped on them. I'm embracing them. They may not work out. They may work out. But at least I'm in early enough to get maximum benefit. A lot of people kind of sit back, wait to see what happens, and it's just like a stock. When you buy it, when it's at its height, you don't really make any money, and you're at the mercy of losing money because you bought at the wrong time. And I'm not going to get into market time and all that stuff because that's a whole nother world. But what I'm going to say is embrace new technology, embrace new things, and participate. One of the reasons that I can sell informational products is because I buy informational products. Now I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I learned this lesson years ago as a salesperson. If you don't believe in what you're selling, you're not going to sell a lot of it. And 
you know, even before, you know, I've embraced Earl Nightingale, lead the field. I read books. I'm always seeking out information because I believe truly at my core that this information makes my life better. I truly believe it, and that's why I can sell it. But if you don't believe in what you're selling, it comes across, and it comes across rapidly. People can pick up on that instantaneously that, you know, and that's one of the reasons that I catch a lot of flack is because I believe in me. I believe in my products, and I believe that they can help people. We live in a society of mixed narratives. It's like, you know, there, there are people who are really silly that say stuff like, if your product's so good, you don't have to advertise. Tell that to Apple, GMC, Mercedes-Benz, <laughs> BMW, Warner Brothers Studio. Every multi-billion dollar company markets and advertises. It, Coke, tell that to Coke. That's silly. You have to continue to remind the customer that you're relevant and you exist. You have to do it. And one of my writing groups, you know, that's a, a serious sore point because many writers feel like they don't want to market. They just want to write, put it out there, and have the world come and like, oh, you're the best thing in the world. It doesn't work that way. Either you're going to market or someone's going to market for you. Or it's not going anywhere. It's just not. So that's another thing. You have to kind of get out of your own way with some of these preconceived notions and narratives of how success comes about. Because success is very simple. You get started, you learn from your mistakes, you keep going till you get where you want to go. That's success. It's not just an overnight surge of brilliance. You know, we'll see someone who was working eight years and then they get that brilliant moment, then it's like, oh, they're an overnight success. That is American narratives because we love those stories. They're so atypical. That's why we love them so much because they're rare. The true story is a guy who worked his ass off. Then one day it all came together. And he it, you don't get to that one day it all came together moment unless you put in that time before that moment. And we get all these people that are just like trying to jump over the experience building level. And coming back to creating your economy, you might have one, two, three, four. My first five companies were turkeys. They were gobble gobble turkeys. But they were tremendous learning experiences that set me up to do better with the other businesses. And then, you know, I talk to people and it's really funny because when you're not successful and when you are going through hell and you don't have any money and, you know, your people look at you, you own that experience. You earn that experience. And then when you transcend from that, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, I did it. Then folks want to say you got lucky or you knew someone. All of these poor excuses for failure. The real deal is there are some people that make the decision to put in the work to become successful. And there are some people who do not. That is it. There's, you know, there's no magic jelly beans. There's none of this. So you have to make that decision to create your own economy. You have to make that decision to educate yourself frequently. And understand, this is perpetual, this educational deal. It's perpetual. There is no, well, you know, I've educated myself for six years. I'm no, that's, that's not the window. It's lifelong learning. That will make you money. Lifelong learning. Because if you're in that mode of learning things and exploring the world and staying abreast of what's happening, and then you've got that experience, then a jewel can drop from all of that that you can exploit for profit. It happens all the time. Because when I see a new technology, you know, I'll give you an example, and I'm going to do a review probably in another week or so once I get some more numbers of Gumroad. Which is a freaking awesome. I mean, just really quick, Gumroad gives you a squeeze page and a payment processing system in one click. Now, for those who have been in e-commerce, knows that's very powerful because Amazon did a study, other people did white papers, that there's any friction between the customer and that checkout cart, and it's called shopping cart abandonment. So many things can happen. The sooner that you can get the customer to get to your squeeze page or your product page and hit the buy button, the better. The sooner that that process happens because there's so many distractions in life. 
And, you know, and this is another thing. Uh, a lot of people are talking about gum rolls and they're talking about other things. And they make this comparison, which is very short-sighted. Well, Gumrose charges 5% and PayPal charges 2 point something. But you don't get the same functionality with PayPal that you get from Gumrose. So you're not comparing apples to apples. You're comparing apples to bananas. And that's the problem. You can't really compare the two because the two platforms are totally different. Gumrose is doing something that PayPal is not. And it's a phenomenal and very innovative way that they're doing it and they're going to get better because they have a really nice development team but this is part of experience if you don't have experience you would go ahead and just look at those hard numbers without looking at the total perspective of the deal because for me just to give you really another quick example because I did this with another thing and with a client created a product put it on their Facebook page and they made 900 bucks in a day now this isn't like you know $30,000 in 24 hours but for this person who was only making five to six hundred bucks a month, it was a huge win. And that was the power of Gumroad and some other things that we explore that I'm going to talk about more so on the Disruptive Ninja channel. Because there's still a lot of resale information to come. There's still a lot of storage auction stories. There's still a lot of crazy Craigslist stories. But for me going forward in the future, most of the juice in the next two, three, four, five years, it's going to be Disruptive Ninja because that's what I believe. I'm excited about it. I'm passionate about it because it just makes my little nerd heart beat really fast because these are awesome times to be living in if you are prepared and actually know that they're awesome times. But if you are still of the mindset that certain people are let in, because you know one of my favorite sayings is, I rather ask for forgiveness than to beg for permission. Which means I'll do some shit, and if it goes sideways, okay, I'll push the edge. I mean, that's one of the reasons I got in a lot of trouble with PayPal and eBay. I was always pushing the edge, always adding higher products, always just pushing, 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 pushing. And, you know, when you push, sometimes shit breaks. I can deal with the consequences of something breaking because I was pushing versus something not breaking and failing because I didn't try hard enough. But that's my personality. But going forward with this new economy, you got to create it. You got to figure it. And also, instead of, you know, looking at things from a static point of view, start thinking about what can you do? Because there's a guy by the name of Mark Crilly. He has a YouTube channel. He's a graphic artist. And he makes more money from his YouTube channel giving away his drawing techniques than he does from his books. Disruption. Being able to communicate with a lot of different people. There's so many things to do. And, you know, this is, you know, because you, you always hear, because, you know, I did commercial art for four years. And when I was an artist, you know, I used to sketch, do sculpture. That's coming back. You always say, you can't make money as an artist. You can't make money as an artist. Well, there's some people that just say, I don't believe that. And they made fantastic amounts. And then, once again, it's like, well, they're exceptional. Or someone, Mark Crilly, he just went on YouTube. 2006, once again, what, I just said, what did I say? Adapting a new technology. And this is something I've researched. If you go to a YouTube channel and you see they have crazy millions of views, always go to the About page and check that their join date. And I guarantee you, hands down, hands down, unless it's a celebrity or something crazy, they all, for the most part, signed up 2006, 2007. Why is that relevant? No competition. Or marginal. If you started a YouTube channel in 2006, 2007, and you had a good plan, and you were someone that people wanted to watch on the camera, and you went over to MySpace and spread your videos, you got so many subs and subscribers. Because I went back, I did a lot of research on this because it was like, I would go to a YouTube channel and, you know, from my personal taste, I'm like, why is this person that has 100 million views? Because I don't get it. About 2006. Oh, psh, there it is. They got started when there was less competition. It's very hard to do with the YouTubers. And I'm not going to discredit them because many of these people work very hard. They were very innovative with their videos. But the people who started in 2006 and 2007 and really went at it hard. They made a lot of money because they embraced new technology 
as soon as it came out. Because if I know, you know, if I knew in 2006 what I know now, I would have been putting storage auction shit up on YouTube in 2006. Didn't know. I went to YouTube. To me, it was kittens, people busting pimples. If I really knew, if I wasn't so wrapped up in the storage auction world, man, could have had a killer channel. Killer. Could have been Storage Wars before you even thought of Storage Wars. It would have been freaking awesome. But because I wasn't thinking like that, essentially my mind was very close to the idea, I let a gorgeous opportunity just slip, just go away. Had the camera, had the merchandise. Shit could have been awesome. And I was just like, didn't know because I didn't embrace new technology. There is, you can't, you can always be second, but you can't always be first. And a lot of times, second sucks. But that's the deal with embracing, embracing new technology. Do not be afraid because one of the things that I've had with a lot of people that I've consulted with is they're afraid of Amazon and they're afraid of eBay. I do get it. I do get it because I'll. this is my warning to anyone. I consider in the resale business eBay a necessary evil. It's like dancing with the devil because you're doing, the, you know, doing your thing and <laughs> snake bit, you know? It's just... Someone um, put up a video the other day that, you know, she knew, well, she's not new. I think she has like 600 feet back and, you know, they're holding her money in. It's just really rough. And that's why I don't sell any of my products on eBay. You know, you can pay me with PayPal, but I don't, I don't have a PayPal account. And yes, I have an eBay account. And you know how I buy most of my stuff without a PayPal account? I go in and I check out credit card through PayPal and never sign up for accounting. It's like, they send me these things, I'm like, fuck you, I am not signed up with another account. Actually, I've got one that I don't use, I forgot the password, and that's how I buy stuff on eBay. I am not setting up a PayPal account. And there was one person, I was gonna buy this 500 bucks item, and they like, you know, if you didn't have a PayPal account, you couldn't buy it. I went ahead and found it for 420, so actually they saved me some money. But the whole deal is, you've, you've got to really embrace this. Uh, I'm going to be putting up a series of videos on the Disruptive Ninja. You know, there's a, a lot of people that are talking about this because the future of jobs is totally, it's going to be totally different. And when I say future, we're talking about our lifetime. We're talking about in the next decade. This is how close this is. This isn't like, you know, 50 years off in the future. This is literally around the corner. And depending upon what job or career path that you chose, it may be knocking on your door today so think about creating your own economy think about what you can do what you can offer the world what you because another thing that people do and it's really bad here on youtube is they'll look at some other guy and just go well that's pretty good i'm gonna do that and then they'll look at another guy and that's pretty good i'm gonna do that and they're gonna look at another guy that's pretty good i'm gonna do that what can you do everybody has a talent Everybody can do something. What can you do? Stop looking at the other guy and start digging into the recesses of you. Figure out your thing. Because, you know, crazy Craigslist stories, that's my shit. Wild storage auction finds, that's my shit. I was the first one to, to do it. And, you know, there's other people that's come along. But I got credit because I did it when no one else was doing it. And there was not immediate gratification for doing that. I went weeks and months and then one day it started picking up but you got to learn how to work in the dark until the light comes. There are so many people it's like that guy in that commercial he, he runs around the gym for 10 seconds and he gets on the scale and because it didn't go down he hits it. You know people looking for these get over that. You may have to work extremely hard for a year or five years in your business before it really pays off. And a lot of people are like, I don't have time for that. You know, like sweet bro, if you live long enough, you got time. If you make a decision, and another thing about the new economy, big, big, big. And this is going to be highly controversial advice. Keep yourself lean as you can financially. If you don't make a lot of money, you need a roommate. If you don't make a lot of money, you need a used hoot. I'll tell you another story. I had a BMW 540 and paid for. Someone, 
on Far Road knocked my shit to smithereens. It was totaled out. But I had an impending business loan, and the bank switched terms on me. That's something else that can happen. So when I got the payoff for the car, I just took the money and paid off the loan. And I went out and bought a 2000, no, a 1991 Honda Accord Air, whatever, to get around with for a few months until my situation rather itself. Yeah, I went from that BMW to a Honda and was styling it too, because actually the 91 Honda Accord actually corners very well. You know, reliable car, easy to get from. That's what you have to do sometimes because you can't roll, you can't live the dream and chase the dream at the same time. And that's what messes up a lot of people because it's like, I'm going to chase the dream and be the dream at the same time. And then they wonder why it falls apart. You can't do it. Few exceptional people might get away with it, but uh uh. No, so you got to make realistic decisions financially for you to be able to set yourself up for a business. Because if you're poor right now, if you don't have a lot of debt, or say you're living at home with mom, and you say, say you're a kid, right? And you're 21, 22, you didn't go to school, and you have like no debt, or you might have what I'm going to call manageable debt, like 10 grand or less. You're in a wonderful situation. I know you're going, what the hell? I'm living at home with my parents. I got $10,000 worth of debt. If you sit down, you're like, bam, go out and get a second job that earns you 500 bucks or create a business that earns you 500 bucks a month, you'll knock out half of that debt in a year. Or if you really be creative and do what this guy who went to recently, it's a Yahoo article, the guy who lived in the van while he went to grad school at Duke. It takes that type of thinking for you to lift up because I want you to understand this. And, you know, this is going to be seeming to be very harsh. And it's going to be unrealistic to some of you. But if the current level of thinking that you employ is responsible for your life the way that it is, your life is not going to get better until you change how you think. Seriously. Now, a lot of people continue to try to employ the same thought process that got them in the hole to get them out of the hole, and that is not going to work. So, in building your own economy and creating your own economy, you must learn how to think differently. You must go out into the world and start asking better questions and stop being afraid. That is one of the biggest holdbacks for so many people. They are afraid to fail. Understand, failure is not nice, it's not wonderful, it's not fun, but it is a part of the process of success. The more that you fail, the more successful that you will be. By, I'm not going to fail, I'm not going to take too many chances, you are going to limit your opportunities for success because of fear. I'm telling you, what did I tell you in the beginning of this video? My first book was screwed up. I had issues. I had internet forums dogging me out. I had people sending me all kind of crazy emails. And I made 62 grand my first year. And that was a mistake. And I've learned from that mistake. And I've learned how to be better. And I've learned how to build a team. And that this is the thing. If I didn't go through that experience, I wouldn't know what I know today. That's what I'm trying to put to you. And this is all part of building and creating your own economy. Because like I said, we're going to get deep in that webinar. We're going to get real deep. I've got people in the hustle of mindset that have done things. I've got other consulting clients that have done things. I'm talking to people. I'm going to relay their stories. And there's many of you that are in the position to do something awesome. And the only reason you're not doing anything awesome is because a lack of information. You have the tools. You have the resources. You just don't have the knowledge. And that's the thing about becoming a life long learner. Go out and get the knowledge because I learn something new every week because I have to. You know, I'm running scared. I know it's going to sound crazy, but I'm running scared because I don't want to be that person 80, 90, 104. <sighs> I wish I had did that. I wish I had did that shit, man. I, I don't want to be that person. That scares me. That keeps me up sometimes. It's like, okay, yeah, this is a crazy ass idea, but you know what? We're going to put it out there. Because if it goes out and it falls flat, at least I know. If it goes out and the sucker takes off, at least I know. Either way, I know. 
and that's the deal. You've, you've got to be more courageous. Uh, in the Hustler Mindset Project, there's this one section talking about courage because I know people who are brilliant. I know people that are, are just have crazy skills, but they're cowards. And you can have someone less skilled, less intellectual, less brain power, but they are a lion and they just go out there and do shit. They're going to have more success than your brilliant ass. And then you're going to talk about it. Like, give you another example on the romantic rim. Successful women who with degrees and businesses love to hate on women who did not make the decision to go out and be, you know, power woman. And if you understand, frequently these women who choose not to be so successful or go out and be power women get married easier than these power chicks. There are some power chicks that get married, but from what I've seen, a lot of successful guys that I know have married average women who are content being a wife and a mother. And I know that's an anathema to many people. They're like, oh no, you're trying to put women in the box. It's a choice, people. So I'm just telling you, they love to hate, but you know, there's, there's another reason, but I'm not going to get into that because that's a whole other channel. But the whole deal is you have to make your choices and be happy with your choices regardless of what the rest of the world thinks of your choices. As long as you are not chopping the heads off of babies or committing heinous crimes, it doesn't really matter and it's no one's business but yours. And a lot of people don't have that level of courage and that's holding them back personally, financially, and career-wise. Because as my grandmother told me, some people are going to love you, some people are going to hate you. No matter what you do, it's just how it is. And once you get to that point where you really don't care and you're just like, you're going to do your thing. And, and, you know, another example, like I make extremely long ass videos. I probably make more long ass videos than anyone else on YouTube. And I've heard it. It's like, don't make it. I read the comments. This is too long. Get to the point. And there's a group of people who self-qualify that, hey, I don't like those long ass videos. I'm not going to watch. That's a self-qualification because I'm going to continue to make these long ass videos because I like it. That's how I get down. That's what I want to do because understand. Glennon 007 was designed expressively for marketing and selling my informational products. That's the only reason this channel exists. That's it. And that's what it does. And making these long as long videos has helped me make money. So I'm not going to stop it. These stories help me make money. And once again, this is my thing. Will this please everybody? Of course not. I have a video talking about you can't be all things to all people. You can. If I can, and this is the thing about knowledge. And people talk about, hey, you don't want to run people off or a potential customer. All money is not good money. All customers are not good customers to have. That's a fact of business. I will tell you that. A lot of people are like, no, no, everything, and please everybody, make everybody happy. That is a recipe for insanity. We live in a culture where the average person has more of a voice than they've ever had in any point in history. And many people use that voice for evil. They use it to get over. They use it to intimidate. And more time in history has the average man had this much power to put their voice out in the world. And there are some people that do remarkable things with that voice. There are some things that people that do awesome, over the top. Oh my, I don't believe they did that. And there are other people that use that voice to be a troll. Or to use that voice to intimidate people. Or to use that voice to beat down people. Or, you know, just crazy stuff. So that's one of the reasons that you have to make that decision to be you. To be who you are. Because as my grandmother said... They're going to like you, some people. They're not going to like you, some people, no matter what you do. All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.